Hello and welcome to Unworthy History. On today's episode, I'm going to bring you some actual history from this book right here, Indian Depredations in Texas by J.W. Wilbarger, published back in 1889. Now this story today takes place in 1839. It's called Colonel Moore's Expedition. In the year 1839, the Lipan Apache Indians, who were almost constantly at war with the Comanches, were so hard pressed by them that they took refuge among the whites. In the winter of 1839, some Lipans who were hunting on the San Saba River discovered that a large body of Comanche had established their winter quarters on that stream. They immediately returned to the settlements and notified the whites of this fact. The Texans, knowing that this would be a very convenient base from which the Comanches could depredate upon the settlements, determined to oust them from it. A force of 60 Texans was soon raised and immediately started for the San Saba River, accompanied by 40 or 50 Lipans as allies and guides. The whole force under the command of Colonel John H. Moore, an old frontier fighter. The colonel, with his Texans, proceeded up the Colorado River, having previously sent forward the two Lipan Apache Indians, along with Malcolm Hornsby and Joe Martin, to act as spies. Before reaching the Comanche encampment, some of these spies rejoined Colonel Moore's command and informed him that the Comanches had been largely reinforced by other bands who had established their winter quarters at the same locality. Colonel Moore, however, determined to attack them at all hazards and continued this march until within a mile or so of the encampment, where he halted until night. After dark, he led his forces quietly to within a short distance of the Comanche camp and again halted them, intending to make an attack upon it as soon as daylight appeared. The plan of attack was as follows. The Lipan chief Castro, with a portion of his men, were to drive off the horses belonging to the Comanches, while Colonel Moore, with his own men and the rest of the Lipans, was to charge upon their encampment. The encampment was composed of a large number of tents made of buffalo skins and many temporary wigwams, all filled with warriors, women, and children. At the dawn of the day, the Texans charged and sent a volley into these tents and wigwams, killing indiscriminately a number of all ages and sexes. In a moment, the wildest scene of confusion ensued, warriors yelling, women screaming, and children crying, all running hither and thither and against and over each other in their fright. In this charge, the Lipans used their bows and arrows with considerable effect. The Texans, in the excitement of the moment and their eagerness to make short work of the enemy, got mixed up in the tents among the Indians, and in this way they were frequently in danger of shooting at each other. Owing to this, and the fact that Colonel Moore perceived at this juncture that the Indians outnumbered his little force considerably, he very reluctantly ordered a retreat. He fell back and took a position in a ravine where he continued the fight until night came on. As soon as he retreated, the Indians rallied several hundred strong and made charge after charge upon his little band, but in every instance they were driven back by a deadly volley from the rifles of the Texans. In one of these charges, a Comanche warrior was shot so severely that he was unable to retreat when others fell back. He laid himself flat on his back and shot arrows high up in the air, so that when falling they would come down point foremost among the Texans. As he lay close to the ground, it was some time before the Texans could give him his quietus and put an end to his boomerang performance. Castro, the Lipan chief, whose part of the program, it will be remembered, was to run off the Comanche's horses, was too greedy and attempted to take the whole drove, some two or three thousand head, but not having men to manage so many, the Comanches came up with him and succeeded in retaking most of them. The few horses the Lipans got away with were not brought into Colonel Moore's camp, so that while he was fighting they were securing the plunder. Had Colonel Moore's force been larger, no doubt he would have captured a large amount of stolen property and some prisoners. Miss Matilda Lockhart, a sketch of whose life among the Indians has already been given, was at that time a prisoner in this Comanche camp, and her father was with Colonel Moore when the attack was made upon it. This battle was fought on the 14th of February, 1839. 
So that's the end of this story. As you can see, it was a little bit different than some of the other stories we've read about on this channel from this book. In this case, the settlers were invading a Comanche camp, and they seem to have committed some depredations by firing indiscriminately and possibly killing women and children. So if you want to hear more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.